Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new way to separate out audio tracks from an already mixed stereo file. This is a service called Lalalai. These guys got in touch with me, and they were kind enough to give me a kind of free pass to use their service, check it out, see what I thought of it, and to do a video on it. And I want to take it through with you so you can determine for yourself whether or not this would be a good solution for you. But this is something that's relatively new in music production. This is something people used to ask me about all the time. Like, hey, I want to extract a vocal so I can just have an instrumental version of an already mixed piece of music. Like, how can I do that? How can I remove the vocal from it? Or how can I isolate a vocal from a ready mixed piece of music so I can put that into a remix? And the answer to that for a long time was like, uh, you can't do that. When something is mixed, you can't really unmix it. But that was then, and this is now, and in recent years, there are these AI programs that are really able to surprisingly effectively extract vocals from instrumentals, and in some cases do more than that, separating bass from the rest of an instrumental or drums from the rest of an instrumental. And La 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 does exactly that. It also has another portal here called Voice Cleaner that's a little bit more focused on noise reduction for a voiceover or dialogue or vocal for music context. But first, I just want to take you through the main service here that allows you to separate out a whole bunch of stuff, and we'll compare it to some of the other solutions that are out there, why it might be a good fit for you, and why you might want to look for something else if not. You'll see right here, it's a really simple web-based app. This isn't a plugin you put in your computer, and there's some advantages and disadvantages there. One of the advantages is, is it's shockingly inexpensive to use, and you can kind of just pay for it when you need it and don't pay for it when you don't need it. I use a specialized piece of software that does something similar. It costs about $800 like on sale. It has a list price of $1,200. It has these music rebalance capabilities in there. So there are some solutions for this, but not really very inexpensive ones that I'm aware of. We'll look at pricing in a second, but you can just see how incredibly easy this thing is to use. You can select from these different types of stem separation algorithms. By default, we're on vocal and instrumental here. Separate out voice from an instrumental. There's an option to do that with drums, bass. You can separate voice from background noise. Separate out an electric guitar, acoustic guitar, piano, synthesizer. And those are pretty much all the major instrument groups. So, questions to ask. How much does it cost? Does it work well? And why would you need this? We'll go with the third one first, the why would you need this, because that's the most fun to answer. There are a few different contexts. Number one for me is going to be creative remixing applications. If you're making sample-based music, where you're taking already created music and then putting it inside of your music and making new music out of that, whether that's in hip hop or electronic music or experimental rock and pop genres that rely on samples, this ability to extract a specific instrument from the rest of a mix is invaluable. Not always are you going to have access to underlying stems of tracks that you're going to be remixing. Sometimes you might have a full, already mixed, already baked in sample to work from, but you just really want to strip out the drums and only use those. Or you want to strip out the vocals and only use those. Or you want to get rid of the vocals, or you want to get rid of the drums. You're using the rest of the track and replacing your own drums completely. So this whole idea of mixing, remixing, creative music production techniques, that is one of the prime use cases for this. But another big use case here is as a tool for musicians to learn to play music better. One of the best ways to learn to play music better is to play along with really good musicians, preferably in person. But if you can't do it in person, playing along with records is a great way to get better at playing whatever instrument it is that you play. There is that annoying, pesky little thing, though, of there's someone else already playing your instrument on that record. So you get rid of the drum track or you get rid of the guitar track and now you're playing the part over this backing with that instrument removed. It also works the other way around. You really want to zoom in, zero in, and hear in detail exactly what the guitarist is playing 
exactly what that drummer is playing. So you can mimic it note for note even better. You can just isolate out that one single instrument track that you can now play along with. So another great use case there potentially. And the third big use case I can think of here is more kind of audio restoration. These kinds of things can even be used in mastering. And I sometimes use tools like this in mastering where you have a final mix and there's not really much you can do about it, perhaps because it was from a live recording with minimal mic setups and the mixer really can't go back and address some of the things that you want to address, or there's an old archival recording and you want to be able to finesse things just slightly. You could potentially do that with a tool like this say extracting just drums from the rest of the track or vocals from the rest of the track. And now you've taken this stereo two track mix and broken into two separate stems where now you have separate control over everything except for vocals on one set of channels and just the vocals on another set of channels. And you can rebalance between the two. Or the more obvious example here is noisy tracks that were either recorded in a film context, a dialogue, voiceover context, or even just in a studio with too much background noise. And now you want to clean up a vocal take, clean up a voiceover, clean up some onset dialogue. You can do that with the noise reduction algorithm. And there's a whole separate landing page just for that as well, voice cleaner. The other two questions, how much does this cost to use? And does it sound any good? Let's get into both of those. They have some of their own audio examples loaded up here. I think they have an acoustic guitar and vocal sample that we can hear right off the bat. Let's listen to just a quick segment of this, and then I'll upload some of my own material that we can listen to together. But first, here's the one they provide. Got a feeling and I don't know why So hard on myself every goddamn time And let's hear just the extracted vocal portion of that. Got a feeling and I don't know why So hard on myself every goddamn time it's pretty good. I've got to say, it really does completely remove the acoustic guitar. And although I can maybe hear what's arguably some artifacting there, this might not sound as clean and as awesome as if we really had the isolated vocal track, it still sounds pretty good. There is this slight, slight hollowness that I can hear in isolation, but I think that if you're going to take this as a vocal sample to drop into like a remix project, that this would actually work pretty well for you. In a sample-based music production context, yeah, I think that this is probably good enough. As far as the acoustic guitar, let's hear a little bit of that. Pretty good there, but nothing to remove. Now there, it's doing a really good job of getting rid of the vocal. I hear the artifacting more. Now that might be because in this section, the guitar is so quiet compared to the vocal. So I really think that's going to be one of the most challenging things to get right. So on that one particular phrase, are the results good enough where I would now grab that guitar part and use it in a sample-based kind of remixing scenario? I'm not sure. It'd have to be really a part that I love, but I think we're being a little hard on it because that's going to be one of the hardest things to get right when we have a really quiet single instrument underneath a much louder vocal. Let's zoom out here to a little later on where the music is a lot louder and the vocal is a little quieter. And let's hear how it does on those two. So here's that section beforehand. And let's hear just the music in that section. Much better. Can I hear where the vocal has been extracted? Yeah, right in this little bit, I can hear the tiniest ghost of the vocal. But again, sample-based music context, this would totally work. A musician trying to sing along to this track, using this as a backing track, would totally work. 
And I think another potential use here is kind of making these into stems where you'd bring the stuff into your DAW. A lot of these kinds of artifacts are going to go away when you take the two tracks into your DAW and play them both at just unity gain together. You're really not going to hear so much of that artifacting because anything that causes artifacting in one track is present in the other track. So if you were to use these in a way where you bring both of them into your DAW, and now you just have a separate fader for each instrumental and vocal, and now you're using this technology to just bring the vocal up or down a little bit, I think you're going to have even better results. But it does surprisingly well, at particularly, I think, isolating vocals in an already mixed track. Here's another bit where just the vocals have been extracted. I want to see that look in your eye, baby. I looked at you. So, remarkably good at removing all the instruments from the background, yes. Hearing it 100% artifact-free, I think that's going to be impossible to do. But I think to a degree how impressed or unimpressed you are by the results of this or any service like it, really, comes down to a degree to your expectations. Here, let's check this out on a totally different genre and style of track. And let's check out some of the other algorithms as well. I'm just going to upload some tracks that a mastering client sent me. Here, I'll look for something that's totally unmastered. Here's a good one. This is kind of more of an electronic track by an artist called No One Self, a guy by the name of Jesse Shelton, who's making some really good sounding electronic productions on his own. Let's uh, open this one up. I'm uploading a full wave file here, so I'd expect it to take about a minute or so, and it seems to be progressing at a decent pace. I'll fast forward through this so you don't have to wait on it. And as soon as it's done processing, it brings us up to this screen, where I upload this unmastered track, and because I selected vocal and instrumental, it's broken it into instrumental and vocal. And before downloading these, I do have the option to preview either of them, and I can also preview any of these algorithms as well. So right before we hear this one, this is a pretty good segue into talking just about how the pricing here works. It's basically a pay-for-what-you-use kind of model. You buy pretty cheaply some access to a bunch of minutes up front, and when you've used them, you want to use more, you can kind of top up your balance and be able to do more still. There's a lot of people who might just throw down a few bucks on this once, and they'll be like set for life because they only need to do this a handful of times. And if you fall into that category, La 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 is possibly a good solution for you. We'll look at what the exact pricing is in just a minute here. I'm not a professional La 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 salesman, so I don't actually know those numbers off the top of my head, but we'll look at it in one sec. But since we've already heard the vocal separation capabilities, let's try it out on some other stuff especially because this is not a very vocal heavy track, as you can see. Let's see how it does on removing drums. So I'm going to go ahead, click drums, create new previews. It's now reprocessing it, separating drums from the rest of the track. And now we've got two versions of the stems, one drums only and one without drums. Let's hear what the separated drums sound like where they drop in. did a pretty good job separating them out. You can hear some incidental effects that probably sounded to the algorithm like a reverse cymbal still got through there. There was one or two moments where I heard something that wasn't drums, but the drums sound pretty clean by themselves. Let's go and hear what the rest of the mix sounds like, starting again from where the drums were removed. Here we go. What if this is all just a dream? Now, in here, I definitely hear some holes where those drums are missing. There's almost these little percussive negative moments happening in the track. So, again, you probably wouldn't use this whole extracted instrumental by itself in a music production context, but there are absolutely little snippets that you could break out. 
You could, for instance, totally grab a vocal sample with pad right about here. I'm sure you've heard this question before. So does the bit without drum sound perfect? No. Are there possibly some little element you could grab from it? Yeah. If you were to try to play along to this track as a drummer, now you're the drummer on this track for practice purposes, would it work? Absolutely, yes. And are the drums that are extracted from this track potentially usable in a sample-based music production context? Again, I think yes. Last potential use case I can think of here would be to download both of these tracks, load them up into the DAW, and now have a separate fader for drums and everything else, and to be able to blend between those two options, bringing up and down drums slightly in the mix, or EQing, compressing, adding effects to drums slightly separately from the rest of the mix in cases where you'd have to do something like that. If, though, I didn't feel like this was a good use of the time balance that I have in here, I could just not use it. I wouldn't have paid anything for doing these previews, but if I like it, I'll go ahead and process the entire file, download these tracks, and I'll try loading up into my DAW. So it seems potentially useful, really easy to use, and pricing, how much does it cost? Well, basically, you can use it for free for 10 minutes. So potentially zero dollars if you only ever have to do this one, two, or three times in your life on short material. But if you have to do it on much longer stuff, you can buy 300 minutes worth of stem separation and audio cleanup for 30 bucks currently. 300 minutes, that's basically five hours. So if you're going to do this for music production purposes, Man, the amount of time it would take you to get to five hours of actual stuff that you've downloaded, <laughs> it'll probably be a while. Good chance that you spend 30 bucks once and like you're kind of set for, I don't want to say set for life, but for some of you, you'll probably be set for life. Especially when you bear in mind that you do not pay for the results if you don't like the previews enough. If they don't sound good, you don't download them, and it doesn't take away from the 300 minutes that you bought. So really incredibly cost-effective. They also have a $15 plan where you get 90 minutes worth of material, so that is basically an hour and a half's worth of music that you are processing in this thing for 15 bucks. Assuming that you are uploading three-minute songs, 90 minutes worth, that's like 30 songs worth of stem separation for $15. Or, assuming you're doing three-minute songs, for 30 bucks, you are getting 100 songs worth of stem separation. So, potentially a good way to go. Is it a good value for what it does? Yes. Are the results good enough? up to you to decide, and you actually don't have to pay anything to decide. So if you're looking for a solution like this, La 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 is a good one to check out. Go over to lalal.ai if you want to try it out for yourself. And let me know in the comments down below what kind of results you had with it. My bet is some of the time you got surprisingly good results, and some of the time it didn't work as well as you would have liked it to, and in those cases you didn't download the files and didn't pay anything for them. So totally worth a try. If you do use it, I'd love to also hear about how you're using it and how these kinds of programs are useful in the work that you're doing. Thanks again for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.